This video goes over question seven of the business applications of integration assignment. Find the consumer surplus and the producer surplus at the equilibrium price level for the given price demand and price supply equations. Include a graph that identifies the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. So we have a exponential demand curve and a quadratic supply curve. So we're going to put both of those into the calculator. And I'm going to start a new problem. Doc, 4 for insert, 1 for a problem, 2 for a graph. And since I have both demand and supply, I'm going to change the name to D for demand. 70 e to the power of negative 0.002x. Then I'm going to put in another function immediately. So I go down arrow, down arrow, and then we're going to change that to S of X for the supply function, 25 plus 0 0.1230s, a 2, and then an X squared. And I don't see anything, so I'm going to need to adjust my window. I'm going to go to the calculator page first and set those two equations equal to each other. Menu, 3 for algebra, 1 for solve. So d of x equals s of x and comma x to solve for x. So that's about 276. This little warning says more solutions might exist, but this is logical for our uh, situation. So I'm going to go back and set my window. Menu, 4 for window silent zoom, 1 for window settings. And for x, I'm going to go negative 100, and I'm going to roughly double 276 to 500 and put tick marks every 50. And my y-intercept here is going to be 70, and I'm going to be heading down from that. So I'm going to go negative 20 to, say, 80 by 5s. And that's a pretty good-looking window for my situation. I've got my decreasing exponential demand curve and my uh, quadratic supply curve here. So we need to know what this, I do know, already know what the x value is. It's right here, 276. But I'm going to find the y value. Menu, 6, 4 for intersection, lower bound, upper bound. And 276, as we expected. And then if we're rounding to the nearest dollar, we're going to call the equilibrium price 40. I don't like all of those decimals, so I'm going to do something about that. Menu, settings, and let's go uh, float 3. So that's a, a better uh, display there. So I'm now going to go tab, and I could do F1, but that's going to give me a blue line. I want a red line. And I'm going to put in 40. So that's my equilibrium price to the nearest dollar. And it really should be closer to $40.30. But we're going to go ahead and get this uh, bounded area. This is the consumer surplus menu 6, 8, this function, and this function. And we're going to go from 0 to 276. So I get uh, that's my... Float 3 wasn't good for that. Menu 9, let's go float 5. So 3807, 3807, enter. Well done. I don't know where that line came from. Producer surplus, so that's going to be that other region down here. Menu 6, 8, 0, enter. 276, enter, oh, graph, graph, 0, enter, 276, enter. So rounding that to the nearest dollar, 2739. 2739. 
So that's not totally unexpected. We're going to go do this on the calculator page. Menu doc one, and we'll go shift plus zero to 276. And my upper function is going to be 40 or F2. And my lower function is going to be F S of X. F2 of X minus the supply function of X tab DX. And I do get a little bit different answer. So let's try 2738. And that worked. Okay, and then all of these look pretty much the same. They're not screamingly obvious like the previous examples. But this one hits the x-axis, so I'm going to eliminate that one. So I think it's down between one of these two. So let's go take a look at our graph. And they've got a little bit different window, so I'm going to do menu for one, and I'm going to go zero to <clears throat> like 1500 for X, and it looks like maybe hundreds for the tick marks, and then zero to 100, it looks like they're doing tens for the tick marks. So it's really down to these two. So one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to guess this one. So it's got to be this one. And that concludes this video.